Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to graph y equals cosecant of pi x divided by 2. Um, so whenever we're graphing the cosecant function, we want to kind of stop, forget about the cosecant function, and graph the sine function of the exact same. Because all we're simply going to do is graph sine and then create some asymptotes and go in opposite directions, and we're done. So when graphing sine, we want to first make sure we understand, know what the amplitude is. We want to know what the period is going to be. We want to know the x scale. We want to know the phase shift. And we want to know the vertical transformation. This is what we want to do for every single graph um, that we apply. Always look for this stuff. So to understand all of this, we got to know our general form. And it doesn't matter if it's in sine or cosecant. Um, but our general form is y equals a times sine of bx minus c plus d. Okay, And that is this. These values are what's going to affect our graph and transform it from the general parent graph. So you have to know the general parent graph. I'm not going to draw it up here um, for this video, but I've done it in other ones. And you need to make sure you know, what does just sine of x look like? Or what does just cosecant of x look like? Because that's going to see how all of this is going to affect it. So the amplitude is the absolute value of a. Well, in this case, we don't have no number in front. So it's absolute value of 1, which is just 1. That means my graph is going to go up 1, down 1. So my amplitude is up 1, down 1. The next thing is the period. Period is 2 pi divided by b. Now this one's a good one, because you can see b represents the number that is being multiplied by x in front of the x, right? So here you can say, oh, well, that's pi. But pi is being divided by 2. So really, it's 2 pi divided by pi halves. And to simplify that, what we're going to have to do is multiply by the reciprocal. Ah. So reciprocal would be 2 over pi, 2 over pi. Well, that divides the 1. Here, the pi's divide out. And I'm just left with a period of 4. So that means it's going to take 4 units um, for my graph to repeat itself. And the x scale is just your period divided by 2. I'm sorry, your period divided by 4. So 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So what that means is the distance between every single important point of the sine graph, the important points are the maximum, the minimum, and the intercepts is going to be a distance of 1. So there's four x scales within a period. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the distance, remember the x scale, between each x scale is 1. So from here's, you know, here'd be like starting 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That completes one period, right? That's one period. And then 5, 6, Seven, eight. All right. Phase shift is going to be how is the graph going to be shifting left or right? Now remember these are um, continuous graphs. They're going to keep on uh, going on and on forever. But we like to sometimes start with the initial period at zero and see if it shifts left or right. So to find that, all we do is take bx minus c is equal to zero. Set whatever's inside your parentheses equal to zero. Well, pi x divided by two equals zero. Again, multiply by the reciprocal. Anything multiplied by 0 is just going to equal 0. So therefore, your phase shift is um, not only where the graph shifts, but also where I like to start. And so I'm going to be starting at 0, which I kind of already knew. Um, so that's why I kind of got started there. Vertical transformation is going to be how you're going to be shifting right and up, which is your d, which in this case is none. There is no d, right? OK, so by having my understanding of what the sine graph looks like, I know that it's going to start intercepted 0, because that's my starting point from the initial, initial um, parent graph. Then it's going to go up, intercept, minimum, intercept. That is going to create one period. Right? You can see now the graph is going to repeat itself. So it's going to be up, down, there, there. And again, I am dotting this line, because we're not really graphing sine. We don't really want to graph sine. We want to graph cosecant. But the reason why graphing sine is helpful, because at cosecant, or for cosecant, Wherever sine intersect y, remember these are reciprocals of each other, right? So at this point, think about it. It's 1, 0, or this, sorry, sorry, this point is 2, 0, right? So you think about that. Sine um, is, uh, ba, 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 ba. you know, sine is y over 1, while well, cosecant is 1 over y. So if you initially have, you know, your y value is 0 for sine, well, it's going to be 1 over 0 for cosecant, which means it's undefined. 
So therefore, at every x-intercept of the sine function, we are now going to graph a vertical asymptote. Because the cosecant function is undefined when sine is equal to 0. Because remember, they're reciprocals of each other, right? Um, now, to finish up the graph, they actually share a point at the maximum and the minimum, and, but the cosecant graphs approach each asymptote. Now, you can obviously use a table of values to get much um, better graph. But you know this video is not about this. It's just kind of getting the general understanding of the transformations and what they look like. But if you apply a table, you'll be able to see it follows this pattern. And then in the green, ladies and gentlemen, is our lovely graph of um, for cosecant. Thanks. <laughs>